Well folks, it's finally here and it did not disappoint. Is it too early to call it the MIDI Model S Plaid? It's the brand new Tesla Model 3 performance. For weeks now, I've been updating you with the latest speculation and rumored upgrades, but now I get the chance and the pleasure to discard the speculation and actually confirm some of the headline figures that you've been waiting to hear. And that's 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and 510 brake horsepower, with a new top speed of 163 miles per hour. Funnily enough, I hear it's enough speed to make the Tesla fans in Germany crack a smile. Or so at least I think it should. Maybe you'll have to let me know. That said, there is one big difference in spec between the performance models delivered in the US and those delivered outside of North America by Tesla China, which then includes the UK, Europe and Australia. But despite it being a big difference, the actual effects on both performance variants are frankly negligible, despite what you read or watch on the internet, so more on that later. Therefore, if you want to understand what's actually new and improved about the 2024 Tesla Model 3 performance, aka the refreshed Tesla Model 3 performance, without the waffle that can follow, I've digested and sifted through all the information the average fan or enthusiast wants to hear about this new beauty. So I'll touch on the exterior changes, the interior changes, what's changed underneath the skin, including the battery, who the battery supplier is, the suspension, brakes, and pretty much everything that makes the Tesla Model 3 performance a mini brother to the Model S Plaid. Before wrapping up, we'll even see how it stands against its petrol competitors, such as the BMW M3, which is arguably a much loved performance powerhouse. I don't think many would dispute that, but is its reign on specs and handling about to come to an end? And spoiler alert, there is a near over 20 grand difference in price. So this could really ruffle some feathers and cause uproar among the petrol heads. I'll let you be the judge on that later. Anyhow, if you haven't done so already, I appreciate if you just like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get into this bad boy. So let's get started with the very first thing that you want to see. Visually, this new Model 3 performance is easy in the eyes, don't you think? This is testament to Tesla because this is the very first Tesla that they have actually dedicated extra resources and time on making a bespoke chassis tailored to performance. It's a no compromise take, I guess. Exactly what you want to hear when searching for all out performance. Therefore, this very performance variant is completely different to the old performance Model 3, as it goes above and beyond a software unlocking performance with a spoiler and track mode of the older Model 3. I mean, no matter what profile you see this thing, the front, from the back, the left or the right, it's fair to say it has performance traits all over it. Starting with the front bumper, it's way more aggressive looking and this variant brings back the slits along the side together with the front splitter as we saw from the leaks heading up to this moment. But these changes to the bumper also make it distinctly unique compared to the rear wheel drive and long range Model 3 alternatives. So if you do magically manage to catch this in your rear view mirror, at least you'll get to see how good it looks from the rear too. You'll spot the new carbon fiber spoiler, but the real deal for me is the new diffuser. It's way more prevalent than the previous Model 3 performance. We've even got wider tires, new sets of brake pads for which if you want to really delve into the changes, Tesla claims that it enhances pedal feel and improves heat management to ensure consistent braking at all speeds and across a wider temperature range. This is hiding behind the 20 inch warp wheels with Pirelli P04 tires. I like these wheels personally, but I can absolutely understand anyone disliking the plastic inserts. These are more about aero efficiency than style to the point where Tesla claims that it actually makes them more lightweight and provides a sharper turn in response, better traction in corner exits and are optimized for range and comfort. But this is very much an aesthetic preference. And if you want more style, then just go ahead and buy a set of alloys that you prefer like any other car. Overall on the exterior point, as there's a lot more to unpack under the skin, the changes made to the front and rear fascias, the rear diffuser, and carbon fiber spoiler work, etc., mentioned earlier, all help reduce the drag and improve the lift balance at high speeds. And in terms of figures, if that's your thing, that's a 5% reduced drag, 36% lift reduction, and 55% improvement in front to rear lift balance compared to the previous Model 3 performance. So it's fair to say there's definitely been some improvements over the previous iteration. 
This car is also marginally longer in length and it sits 0.4 of an inch lower than the refreshed Model 3 long range. The width hasn't changed at all, so the length must make a difference to the performance, I guess. Moving on to the interior changes to the Model 3 performance. Instantly noticeable over the old Model 3 performance and the upgraded Model 3 today is the new Sport Seas. Reportedly to be way more comfortable and particularly supportive when pumping the accelerator now. But one thing to note is that Tesla did not cut short on the heated and cooling ventilation of the seats as this folds all the way around to the bolsters to which is a small detail but I rather like that attention to detail. But to finish this off, we had the ludicrous emblem towards the top of the seat to remind you that it's ludicrous speed. Strange, but an interesting point to probably raise now is that the car is officially called the Model 3 Performance and not the Model 3 Ludicrous Performance, yet had a ludicrous badge on the back, but also has no ludicrous mode to activate. It's actually just insane mode. So there is this ludicrous branding all over, but no real ludicrous name or mode anywhere in sight. Not quite sure why, but a real positive about this performance variant is that once it's actually in insane mode, it's ready to do them 0-60 sprints from the get-go, which is a variation to previous ludicrous or plaid-powered vehicles, which do need to optimize the battery ahead of the sprint, etc. Moving back to the point on the interior, this retains all the gains of the new refresh Model 3 interior, including the dual screen and stalkless steering wheel, etc. All these details can be found in the video above, so you get all the premium refinements from the new upgraded Model 3 with one or more addition an upgraded track mode dubbed V3. This now integrates motor controls, suspension controls, powertrain cooling, and vehicle dynamics controller under a single unified system. And this gives you a more predictable, stable, and consistent experience in various track environments. And this is something that could probably be refined over time too with software updates. So this is just the start, I guess. Moving to the nerdy stuff. What's the battery range, suspension, and the price tag? Who's ready to be wowed? North American customers will be packing the 82 kilowatt hour Panasonic battery, but those served by Tesla China, being the UK, Europe, and Australia, will get the 79 kilowatt hour LG battery instead. And some Eagle Eye fans will also have spotted that the North American Model 3 has over 500 brake horsepower, whereas the UK bound Tesla is closer to 460 brake horsepower. This did ruffle some feathers among Tesla fans on X, with some claiming that the 2.9 seconds 060 was exclusive to the North American edition. After checking the UK band variant, the 460 brake horsepower version is being advertised here with 2.9 seconds 060, therefore the difference is likely just a difference between the rollout, with the main difference between both builds probably felt in the latter speed range. Talking about vehicle range, this plonks itself in between the rear wheel drive and long range variants today at 328 miles WLTP or 296 miles EPA for US customers and still retaining the charging speeds of up to 250 kilowatts. Some other meaty details I must, must, must share with you is the new rear motor. Tesla claims 22% more continuous power, 32% more peak power and 16% more peak torque all compared to the previous Model 3 performance and all with lower total energy consumption. That's a win. Talk about having your cake and eating it. The fun doesn't stop there. Remember when I said that this is a bespoke built performance chassis? Well, this let them add a new adaptive dampening suspension system and this adjusts to the driver and the road inputs in real time to optimize the ride and handling while also improving the ride comfort when you want it. Controlled via in-house software, which means it keeps improving via future over the air software updates. So this is probably something you need to witness in the flesh to truly understand this evolution and progress made with the new suspension setup, which is going to differ from the other Tesla vehicles, even with the rear wheel drive and long range variants of the upgraded Model 3. So to wrap this video up, what better way to describe this new bespoke Model 3 performance as a mini Model S Plaid? It's a smaller brother with features that fall just shy of the benchmarks set by the Model S Plaid. But the truth is for a refreshed Model 3 performance to cost just $45,490 after the tax credits and £59,990 here in the UK, when you compare that to a BMW M3, you're looking at over 20 grand difference in the price tag or $30,000 in the US too. But spec wise in the US, 
it beats it on horsepower and the not 60 times. The weight is marginally better in the BMW's favor. Handling is going to need to be tried and tested, but the car that grunts more, is that now worth the price tag? Not forgetting that it is now the slower car. For me, I think I have a good feeling on what is good value for money here, but each to their own, do what you wish with your own money. Overall, this Model 3 performance seems like a good, meaningful step over the long range for those performance enthusiasts and even over the existing iteration too. If you are interested in the Model 3 performance, has this got you hyped even more or did it fall short of your expectations? Would you pick the BMW M3 over the 2024 Model 3 performance? And if so, I'd love to know why in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe, share the video with any friends or family that may find the video beneficial. You folks have been great and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.